with moose and elk also. Uh, I take a, a meat saw mm -hmm. or a bone saw and I slice it. Yep. After I slice it, I grind off the grooves. Then I, in pencil, I just outline what I'm doing. Yep. I take the point of the knife and I put the cuts in. Yep. After I've done that, I put in the ink over the whole thing. Yep. And I shave all the outside part. With the knife. With the knife. And when I shave it, when it turns light, I know I've got to the bottom of where the ink goes. And when I'm done shaving the outside, then I start on the light spots. Right. And I shave, or I use the point, and I, I put the shading in. All right, good. And when I'm done with my belt buckles, Sometimes I seal them yep. so that they don't wear or that the... And you're, you're wearing a belt buckle now, aren't you? Yeah, this is a belt buckle that I'm wearing right here that's got scrimshaw on it. And that's a... and was that deer or what was that? This, this is moose. That's a moose... Uh, what do you call antler. it? A moose antler. And this is the crown of the rosette that's right next to the skull. That's amazing, Dennis. And it drops off in the fall. Okay. So, how long would this piece take you? A couple hours. A couple of hours, and that's yeah. to etch that's, it out? That's just to etch it. Right, and then you have to ink it, and then well, you have to... No, it, I would first outline it, it might take me two to five minutes to outline it with pencil. Yeah. And then I would cut it, yep. cover it with India ink, and then I'd shave it. It would probably take me a couple hours. Yeah. This is... Uh, a moose antler, a drop moose antler that a hunter gave me, and this is what I can do with scrimshaw. So I understand that in this moose scrimshaw, you have hidden something that most people won't see. Can you give us a clue, Dennis? Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. And I picked this up from what Bateman has done with some of his pieces. Sometimes he'll even hide a tin can. This this is a cougar pup. So the can cougar pup. Find it. All right. We'll leave it for people to find. And what about these in the box? What are all these about, Dennis? Most of these in the box are uh, examples. Uh, belt buckles, uh, I do uh, brooches, I do uh, polo ties and belt buckles. And I and see some... sometimes they're just a display piece that I put on a piece of wood. Yep. And then I, I noticed that you're doing these beautiful carvings on uh, ivory piano keys. Can you tell me about those a bit? Well, the only ivory we can use is the old ivory from piano keys and since the 1960s yep. they've had to replace them with plastic right but these are ivory and as long as you keep them the shape of the piano keys they are legal to sell or to possess beautiful and so basically before you were uh, doing scrimshaw work you were a carver and here are some samples of your uh, uh, shorebirds, I guess, and uh, uh, working ducks. Decoy working decoys. Working decoys. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us what we've got here? What's the black one? The black duck is a drake wood duck, our most beautiful uh, duck. Yeah. And this other one is a female mallard, which is very common in this area. And you're painting them yourself? I paint them and uh, these are what you call working decoys. So someone could use these in the water? If you put keels on them, yep. uh, you could float them in the water and hunt with them. Very good. And what about this, this lovely shorebird? I just love this shorebird. Uh, That's a curlew, did you say? This is a curlew and when you're 
I did a bunch of shorebirds and I did all of my own plans for the shorebirds. So you so I did 12 or 15 different plans for shorebirds and I never did more than three of one particular species. Hmm. What was your favorite? The curlew is probably my favorite and the dunlu. And why is that? Just because of the shape of the bill and because of the color and the way they fly. Well, because you're a, a fisherman, uh, you know your insects, right? Yeah. So what have we got here in these uh, on these piano keys? This is a dragonfly nymph. Yeah. This is a mayfly nymph. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, well. This is a stonefly. Yeah. This is a wasp. Uh, that's a mosquito. This is your purring mantis. And this is your wasps. Yeah, and then right in the middle, we got a little old squirrel. How do you and get in there? We got a squirrel in the middle. Yeah. So what's this again, uh, Dennis? That's a brook trout after a mayfly in, in and, the stream. And the brook trout is one of your favorite fish, brook right? Brook trout is my favorite. The most beautiful fish that we have in North America. And why is that? Just the coloring, the shading. The coloring, the shading. It just sets it off. So why do you do this? What, what compels you to do it, Dennis? I just enjoy doing it, and I have fun doing it, and I'm usually pleased with the end result. These decoys are between 150 and probably three or four hundred dollars. Okay, and what about the shorebird? The shorebirds from 50 to 300 dollars. Very reasonable, Dennis. We then went over to his workshop that is at the back of his property. It's a large-scale building filled with all sorts of projects in various states of completion. Of course, he does paddles from hand. He will also carve out salad bowls, large-scale salad bowls, usually in turtle form. He reinvents furniture with moose antlers. Vertebrae was 42 inches long. So you've done the stylized uh, moose uh, mount with the vertebrae of a whale, right? Blue whale. Vertebrae of a blue whale. <coughs> <coughs> and that's the exact length of a moose. Head. Head. It's the same length. So what's the story on that bone you're holding? <coughs> a friend of mine was fishing in the branch of the 12 Mile Creek. In Bronte? Uh, where the water had uh, gone into the bank. Yep. And it was found in the bottom of the creek. And what is it? This is uh, the lower jaw bone of a fin whale. And it's about five and a half feet long. And it was found in Halton? It was found in Halton. 